Okay, so I've got a line, a square, a cube, a tesseract. I'm going to try to build a pentaract here. The formula that I uh, am using is presented in a previous video. The, but it's uh, take a line, take, take a point, copy the point, move it some distance away from itself, and you have a line. Lay the line flat, take the line, copy it, move it an equal distance to its length away from itself, join the uh, extreme ends and you have a square, lay square flat, copy it, extend it uh, an equal distance to the width of a side uh, above the uh, previous square. Connect the uh, extreme vertices, and you have a cube. Lay the cube flat. Just a second. Lay the second cube uh, flat. Move it a uh, copy cube. Move the copy uh, equal distance away from the original. Join the uh, extreme vertices. And you have a tesseract. Uh, I've decided, since I'm the only person doing this apparently, uh, that I can come up with names for these processes. I've decided to very simply call these uh, hemispheres. Of course, they are hemicubes and not parts of a sphere. But then your brain has hemispheres and is, of course, not composed of spheres. Uh, so they're hemispheres, uh, and as your brain has hemispheres joined by the medulla oblongata, the joining of the uh, vertices, I call medulation. And so the process of extending a object of one dimension into another dimension is medulation of hemispheres. So now let's uh, see if we can use that same formula. Lay it flat, copy it, extend it an equal distance to the edge away from the original, and join the extreme vertices through medulation. Will we now get a pentaract? One second. This right here is the first pentaract I built, and it is a rather interesting shape, but this one that I built as we can see right here, is broken. I did a poor job of making it. I tied it too tight, and you can see right here. Ack. Come here, you. And you can see right here that one of the uh, tubes just uh, split and got torn, torn asunder there. So as fun as it is to examine this, it's not quite a pentaract because it broke. So let's uh, do the medulation on these hemispheres and then make these be the hemispheres of the uh, next step, which is the pentaract, and do medulation on that. And then we've got our second tesseract, which then gets laid flat. and which is then forced into the standard 2D illustration that we all know and love of the Tesseract that we wonder about. The there we go. Uh, and then I'm going to use some twist ties to stabilize it. And so there we go, I've got it stabilized with the twist ties. And then I do the same with this one. So we've got the Tesseract, we take the Tesseract, copy it. Copy it, uh, move it an equal distance to the length of an edge away from the original, 
and then modulate the uh, extreme vertices. And the going as it's going is like shockingly easy. When I put the two cubes together, I couldn't believe how easily it went together. And now I'm putting this together and it's so much easier than I thought it would be. It's just like, this formula works. <laughs> Got it about halfway finished now. And then I'm down to the last uh, medulation bit there from the final pair of vertices. And there it is. We've got the thing. One second. There. Now, this one uh, was of one specific uh, structural form. I'll put a link to the uh, formula I used for that one. And this one is actually of a very different structural form. And I have no idea what's going to happen when I unwrap it. Well, I guess it'll be unwrapped. Unbound. And we'll see another thing I've built that as near as anyone knows, has never existed at any point in the entire history of the universe up till now. And that people will surely say is not what I claim it is. Because, of course, a fifth dimensional square can't possibly exist in a three-dimensional universe. So maybe, just maybe, I'm full of crap, or those people who say we live in a three-dimensional universe have no idea what the word dimension means. And they're just repeating what some other person said about a three-dimensional universe. Because they heard it, they accept it, they can't do the math to prove it wrong. And this one is quite different from the uh, previous one. Which was uh, much more uh, designed as a uh, ascending spiral. You can like, see it's impossible to spread the sides of it apart. And yet this one is perfectly willing to... to do that. So again, whenever someone tells you that you live in a three-dimensional universe, ask them, point blank, what? What, what, what is this thing that you say dimension? What is one of those? What does that word mean? Because I'm sitting here with a fifth dimensional square so I don't think it means what they say it means. <laughs>